Yeah, so after um, PTO Ibiza, um, yeah, I obviously got a, a stress fracture in the sacrum. Um, yeah, about three months of recovery from that. Um, tried to come back for, for an Easter World Championships there. Um, just uh, went a little bit too hard um, after an injury and, yeah, the body just wasn't wasn't ready and, um, yeah, we got a bit of an ITV um, issue. Um, and we've sort of been trying to deal with that uh, ever since. These things, if anyone's ever had an ITV injury, they can they can last anywhere from you know three weeks to bloody uh, years. So um, yeah, we're we're on top of it now, um, and we've got a pretty good team here um, in Andorra and back in Australia as well, um, working together. So um, yeah, we're we're on top of it, and and I think we can still get a salvage a good year talk to me about what it was like to miss the asia open last year because i think you were targeting peaking mm. at that race you know i think when we connected you know ibiza was almost like an unexpected bonus mm. you were like really hitting your stride almost unexpected to you you beat you know three ex-olympians and you know came out of nowhere and really rocked the scene and all eyes were on you going into Singapore. What talk to me about that experience? Yeah, it's uh, injuries are part of part of sport, but you never want to have them. But um, yeah, obviously, after Ibiza, you're pretty excited about the season, um, and then to be hit, hit with that a, a week later um, was pretty heartbreaking. But yeah, like you said, uh, Singapore, I think, is one of those courses that that suits me perfectly. It's um, super hot, close. It was I, when I was living in Australia, it was the same time zone. So it was like, everything was like just perfect. And um, even, even this year when I watched it, I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> it was just like the perfect race. Everything that happened in it, I was like, this is, is the race I wanted, I wanted to be a part of. But I guess I'll have to wait till, <laughs> till next year. So um, yeah, I, I think there's still a few good races that suit me this year. So yeah, um, Hopefully, I can I can get on top of this and get back to that that shape that I was uh, last year. What does that all mean? Like, what what were your ambitions and hopes like for the launch of the T100 and the whole season as it rolled out? Like, what was your mindset when that that we kind of unveiled the big T100 picture? Yeah, incredible for the sport. I think everyone's on the same page there. It's it's a huge step forward um, for professional triathlon. Um, to have a series is yeah, it's incredible, and I think. Um, all athletes, all athletes, uh, I think, in the same. It's a pretty exciting step that the sport's never seen in, in long course triathlon. Um, I think now, like the short course guys are, are looking at long course and going, "Wow, there's, there's a serious opportunity um, to prof- professionalise my career and, and another option out, outside of the Olympics um, to really, yeah, push your career forward." So, um, yeah, it's uh, something. I've thought about a lot, but also with this type of injury, it, it, it's something that um, I just have to wait until until I'm ready to to come back. I mean, I've still got 10 plus years in, in this sport. So, um, yeah, it's something that I don't want to rush, but uh, it's also it's also annoying to not be on the start line with these guys. But, um, yeah, there's still still lots of races to come. So there's definitely some opportunities with, with like, Olympics ending. Um, me and all those guys coming back over so it's um yeah the end of the year is going to be spicy i think can you give me a bit of an overview as to like the implications of your injury from the t100 perspective where you were hoping to race what what you've had to pull out of what you're hoping to kind of um approach you know following san fran and the like yeah so with this injury um yeah obviously i was hoping to race pretty much every race um in the series but obviously i had to skip miami um singapore and san fran um i was planning on racing in san fran but it's just taking a little bit longer so um yeah hopefully hopefully we're back on on in london um i'm not gonna <laughs> say it for sure but I, i'm hoping back on for london um and then uh yeah las vegas um and, and the last two in the Middle East. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can still still salvage uh, a decent 
a decent season. Um, and like you said, yeah, I don't want to, you don't want to rush these things. So, um, yeah, I want to make sure I'm, I'm semi at the top of my game before I make a return as, as the level's just um, super high in these things now. So, um, yeah, I don't want to come to a race and get 20th place. So, um, yeah, hope for, hope for the best. You know, ho- hoping that everything's well and you're fighting fit for London. Talk to me about, like, any additional pressure you've got to do well in all the remaining races, right? Because as as a result of San Fran, obviously, you've got the injury clause, which means, you know, you get a chance to support the tour from a media perspective. But, um, you know, there aren't a lot of, there's not a lot of room for error. Um, can you chat me through that? Yeah, obviously, with the series, um, yeah, like you said, there's, there isn't much room for error, especially when now I've missed the first three races, um, if you want to have a chance at, at you know, doing well in, in the series, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be tight, but, um, yeah, I think it, I think it is still possible, uh, to do it. I just, um, have to go semi-decent in London and hopefully build, build on from that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's just uh, it's just the uncertainty around around this sort of injury that um, yeah it's it's going to be it's going to be tough to do to do well in London but then again I think if you go to London a little bit underdone there's not going to be much pressure um, and obviously it's going to be exciting to actually get back into racing after having almost a year out oh well yeah a year out so um, I think just being healthy and fit again um, and being on the start line will will be a pretty yeah big step um, considering the last year has been yeah quite tough. How 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 are you mentally right now, mate? I I feel like you're you're pretty mentally strong from what we've talked about, but I can imagine it's it's a it's been a tough patch. Yeah, yeah. I think um, obviously the first when it came to realization we're gonna miss out in the first few races. Um, yeah, it sucked a fair bit, but um, now we made the move over overseas to to really make the most of um, less travel um, and stuff like that from living in Australia. So, um, yeah, we decided to do all that when we when we realised we weren't going to be able to get back last year. So we did all that stuff um, to keep myself busy. Um, and now, yeah, it's just back into back into training and, and getting on top of this, top of this injury, um, which obviously takes up a lot of time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, it, it's time consuming um, recovery. It's almost harder than actually training. So um, it's something I'm not really used to these long term injuries. So um, yeah, I think it will also set me up for the rest of my career. Um, being able to to get on top of strength and conditioning and find all my weaknesses um, that I didn't even know I had. So um, yeah. A lot of the greats, um, or you know, some major, ma- some of the major athletes. I mean, you, I feel like it's hard to pick one of the definitive athletes, if any, that haven't gone through a almost like a chapter of injury, right? Like Lucy, Yan, mm. you know, the list goes on and on. You know, Ali currently living it, right? Like, um, you know, so it, it's it's yeah, I guess it's what you do with it. Can you talk to me about how important the T one hundred series is to you? Yeah, I think it, it's sort of the T one hundred series, sort of. Um launched my career um, to, to sort of the next step. Um, I was sort of just beating around the bush beforehand and then, um, yeah, the win Ibiza, um, you know, gave me confidence so I can, can compete on the on the world stage. And um, I think it's a distance that's that's really cool. Like you see Sam Long now just consistently just knocking these things, knocking these things out of the park. So, um, I think it's one of those, one of those distances where you can just, can consistently race um, at the top of your game, so um, yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. It brings us all around the world to some of the some of the biggest cities in the world and some of the coolest places in the world. So um, yeah, you can't really ask more for, in, in any sport, really. So um, and also, obviously, competing against the the currently the world the world's best athletes. So um, every every month. So yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's um, a big step forward, I think. 
what, when you've been watching the racing and you said you had a little bit of FOMO here and there, particularly with Singapore, can, Singapore, can you talk to me about the races that have gone and what your takeaways have been, any kind of insight or, or opinions that you've got on some of the, the athletes, um, you know, just, yeah, your take as, as an athlete and as a fan would be really interesting. Yeah, I'm really surprised. I think, um, I don't think anyone would have expected, um, like Sam Long, for example, um, to, to come in and absolutely tear it up. Um, everyone was sort of saying that if you, if you can't swim now, it's game over for you. But, um, I think it's the sports in, in a, in a way gone the opposite direction. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be kind of cool to see um, when these uh, Olympian wildcards uh, come back into it. Um, and, you know, the swimming, the swimming level uh, lifts a bit more. Um, if there's a chance for, you know, a, a breakaway group to to get away and, and make, you know, Sam, Sam really work for it. Um, but at the moment, it looks like, uh, yeah, it's, it's anyone's, anyone's game out there at the moment, which I think is kind of cool. So... Um, yeah, you get in the start line, and I don't think anyone has any idea who's <laughs> who's going to win these things. So um, yeah, I think uh, it's quite exciting, and I really look forward to to getting back into it. Um, you got any predictions for San Fran? Um, it's a tough. It's definitely a tough course, there, friend. Um, it's usually quite cold as well, so. It's hard. It's hard to make predictions. Like I said, it's almost impossible. Um, it's just going to be someone who's tough as nails. I, I heard it's pretty hilly. Um, usually, pretty, pretty ch- like chilly in the morning. Um, cold, cold water swim. So, um, I think it's someone who can just, you know, grunt it out over that last 18 k's. Um, yeah, we'll win for sure. Um, what are your thoughts about Mark Van Riel being in the mix? And Taylor Nip, like you said, like some of those wild card teams. Yeah, I think I think those guys will, yeah, they'll get excited for sure. It's a different sport of racing for um, Martin, so um, I think it, this course probably probably suits that sort of athlete, um, real punchy punchy sort of sort of athlete. So um, he's definitely a good shout for for the win, um, but I don't think the the guys on the tour are going to let it let it happen easy. So, um, yeah, I think it would be it would be an exciting race between between Martin and, and the rest of the tour. Can you tell us what you're thinking about for your return to racing this year? You know, if things go to plan. Yeah, so hopefully I return in London, um, and then hopefully a little bit, well, hopefully a lot stronger in, in Las Vegas. Um, then hopefully, yeah, race. Race the World Championships in, in Kona, I'm in, and then back on to, to the last two grand final, uh, where I hope to be almost almost at 100. percent So um, the plan is to use these next few races as a as a good build um, into into the grand final races in the Middle East, where I really I really hope to be um, close to yeah my top level. Um. And chat to me about the speculation, right? I think one of the the advantages, you know, and sometimes challenges is when you're not every day posting on social media and telling the world what you had for breakfast and all that stuff, um, is that they fill the gap, you know? And I think there's been some speculation as to your intentions, where you want to race, where you don't want to race. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Yeah, I think it's the power of silence. (laughs) I don't know. I I just think, um, yeah, I, I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing, and that's all I really uh, worry about. Um, uh, we have an awesome group of sponsors um, behind us that we really enjoy working with, um, and yeah, that's really what it comes down to. Um, so as, as long as, as long as we're happy, and sponsors are happy, and uh, our team's happy, um, coaches the coach is happy. Um, you know, that's all that really matters for me. So. Um, yeah, I don't really get caught up in too much of that stuff. So, uh, your opinion and other people's opinions is uh, at the moment it uh, yeah, doesn't worry me too much. Yeah, I think people are desperate to know everything about you because they just don't know where you're coming from or what you potentially 
pose in this sport and you could be a real you know dream killer for for those out there making making the headway what do you say to that um i don't know um yeah i get i guess the plan after the after ibiza wasn't to to get an injury so um everyone deals with this stuff differently um like some people like to to show their whole story and their recovery online um but i think uh the way this injury was it was just like we had to find uh the right sort of biomechanics uh return to return to sports for the um pathway so um it's been a long a long process um and i think if i <laughs> we're showing the process i think people just get bored so um obviously for me i just like like to keep it within a small little group um and yeah it's um it worked it's worked for me before so and i think it's just who i am so um yeah i don't think uh i'll, I'll be changing anytime soon